If you have even a passing interest in film, chances are you're familiar with D.W. Griffith's 1915 film, The Birth of a Nation, the first ever film epic, with a length of around 193 minutes. A film so monumental that it holds the title of being the first film ever screened at the White House. Nowadays, its reputation is mainly for being an incredibly racist film that portrays the Ku Klux Klan in a positive light, and that's not to mention the blackface. But even so, it's impossible to deny the film's impact in the history of American filmmaking, right? Well, no, actually. Cabiria is a 1914 Italian film directed by Giovanni Pastrone. The film focuses on the abduction of a young girl during the Second Punic War. Though the film is currently only available in a shortened two-hour version, to my knowledge, the film was originally 190 minutes long. Cabiria was released a full year before The Birth of a Nation, and as such, many consider Cabiria to be the first true film epic. Okay, but even when you take that away, Birth of a Nation was still the first film shown in the White House, right? Well, still no. The Birth of a Nation was shown in the White House in February of 1915. Eight months earlier, in June of 1914, another film was shown on the White House lawn. That film was, unbelievably, Cabiria. The pedantic might point out that Cabiria was shown on the White House lawn, but Birth of a Nation was the first film to actually be screened inside the White House. Well, according to Motography of March 1912, the first motion pictures to be shown inside the White House were actually nature documentaries, hosted by Richard Kierton around 1908, years before Birth of a Nation or Cabiria. Even so, Cabiria still holds the title of the first narrative feature film to be shown at the White House, regardless of whether we're talking about the East Room or the Lawn. Cabiria's historical significance extends far beyond a White House screening, however. Martin Scorsese, who is probably the greatest living director, all things considered, said in a statement alongside the 2006 restoration of Cabiria that Pastroni invented the epic and deserves credit for many of the innovations often credited to D.W. Griffith, specifically citing the moving camera as one of Cabiria's innovations. So, why do we typically place D.W. Griffith and The Birth of a Nation on such a high pedestal, when that pedestal ought to be reserved for Giovanni Pastrone and Cabiria? Well, it's very simple. American nationalism. We Americans love to think of ourselves as being the best at everything, even when we are far outclassed by foreign nations. Think about how many foreign films are subject to less than superb Hollywood remakes. Americans want the narrative to show that Hollywood has always been the cornerstone of innovation in the film industry, but the reality is the American film industry was and continues to be more concerned with turning profits than innovating the art form. So go do yourself a favor and watch Cabiria. If not for yourself, then at the very least despite D.W. Griffith from Beyond the Grave.